Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody has had a great week so far. It seems like time is really passing by. Uh, the wife and I talk about it a lot. Time is flying. And, and, and when you are aware of the fact that time is constantly moving, it should create a sense of urgency in your mind that you have a limited time to seize the opportunities of your potential and your uniqueness in the world. And I want to talk to you about that today. But before I do, I want to bring to your attention that, yes, book number 21 is finally here. I am the power of self-declaration, uh, the importance of understanding your ability to speak literally into your life, into your future, into your destiny, the power of self-talk. The conversations we have about ourselves are immensely powerful in setting the tone, the attitude, the anticipation, the expectations that will govern our behavior. Uh, we have to understand that we live our lives based off of our beliefs and what we believe we speak out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and 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 so we have to be careful another way to say that is out of the abundance of the subconscious the mouth speaks and what the mouth speaks reinforces the beliefs what the mouth speaks sets the guidelines of behavior what the mouth speaks puts into motion declarations that establish reality and i can get i and i get into the specifics of that in this book again this is book number 21 uh, you can catch the link in the description box. You can order it directly from us at the Visionetics Institute. Or you can go online and get it in a number of different places. But whatever you do, start gauging how you speak to yourself about yourself, how you speak to others about yourself. It's so much power in being able to govern your self-talk. That's book number 21. And also, don't forget, if you haven't gotten book number 20, Critical Mass, this is where it all begins, the six-book series. This is the second part in the six-book series. This is the first book in the six-book series on personal development. I want to give you guys some things that you can reference and go back to and develop and build and grow. So again, uh, get your book, whether you get it directly from us, um, and get a signed copy or you order it online, whatever you do, go out there, get it, make it a part of your library. For all the people who have been chiming in on Critical Mass and what it's done, I guarantee you this book will be equally as impactful in your life. On that note, I'm going to get to moving. There are some other resources uh, in the description box, both paid and free. Find your space in there. I, I encourage you to invest in yourself. Uh, that's a part of life. You can only get out of life what you sow. So uh, if you want to harvest, you're going to have to start sowing. And whether you sow with me or sow somewhere else, you're going to have to start sowing and investing in yourself. And I encourage you, no matter who, where or who you invest with, find someone who can take you to the next level lower the learning curve, shorten the learning curve. Sometimes you don't have to go out and learn every lesson on your own. There are some of us who have done it. There are some of us who have decided to make it a part of who we are to teach other people how to do it. And find the person that works best for you and tap in at some level. That's my encouragement to you. Now I want to talk briefly about the importance of 
optimizing and seizing the moment of your uniqueness, which taps into and isolates and illuminates your potential. Um, I'm not going to be long, but what I'm going to tell you is that when I meet people, when people come to me, or when I encounter people just simply out in public and conversations are struck up, that one of the common elements that I find that people are operating out of a sense of fear. They are procrastinating. They are selling themselves short. They are in many ways neutralizing the uniqueness of their design. And when, when I talk about design, I'm talking about there's this uniqueness about you that God gave you. It's the uniqueness of your design. Even though you are like somebody, even though you may do things similar to someone else, there's this uniqueness about you that there's only one of you on this planet and that in that there's something special. But what has to happen is you have to have the courage to be unique. You have to have the courage to be different. You have to have the courage to not want to fit in. One of the easiest things to do in this world is to be mediocre. One of the easiest things to do in this world is to be average, is to be like everybody else. Why? Because you don't have to deal with the, the, the lack of acceptance, the rejection, the people talking about you, the people ridiculing you. But the moment that you decide to step into the uniqueness of your design, that specialness that makes you different than everybody else in the world, and that same specialness that will allow you to have a massive impact in the world, you will find that it gets a little lonely. You will find that there are going to be a bunch of people that will talk about you, a bunch of people who will ridicule you, a bunch of people who will literally pray for your demise. Why? Because when you start to walk in the uniqueness of your design and you start to climb out of the box that society has put you in, those inside of the box will be convicted by your progress. Let me say that again, that when you start to have success in life above and beyond what is considered average, there will be people who will be convicted by your progress. In other words, your unwillingness to be mediocre will convict the mediocrity in others. In other words, there are some people that come from the same background that you come from. There are some people who have had the same challenges that you have had. There are some people who will talk about the same impediments and obstacles and, 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 and challenges that you talk about, and they have used it as an excuse. They have used it as a crutch. They have used it to sit up and say that this is why I have never been able to make it. This is why I'm stuck in the box. But the moment you start to climb out of the box, you convict them of the erroneous nature and the fallacy of their argument. Let me explain it to you a different way. When you start to climb out of the box, everybody that comes from where you come from, everybody that's been through what you've been through, everybody that sits up and talks about all the things that you talk about that you've had to overcome, and th they no longer have the excuse because there's someone in their periphery, someone in their environment, someone in their space who's had the same challenges or worse that's climbing out of the box, that's doing something exceptional, that's doing something extraordinary and phenomenal, and now they don't have that. You're your success is literally convicting them of their mediocrity and the lack of uh, a true commitment. See, fear will make you hide behind excuses. Fear will make you want to ex uh, to seek out the acceptance and approbation and approval of others. Fear will make you docile and, 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 and acquiescent to environmental influences instead of standing in your purpose. You've got to make up in your mind that you're going to walk in the uniqueness of who you are. You got to make up in your mind that there's something special about me. It may be in my personality. It may be in my mentality. It may be in my physicality. It may be in my spirituality, but there's something about me that nobody else in this world has. And God designed it in me so that I could step out into this world and be a difference maker, be a change creator, be somebody that will have an impact on people's lives. But I have to be willing to step out. I 
have to be willing to be rejected. I have to be willing to be disliked and hated. I have to be willing to be looked at and ridiculed and considered foolish and crazy and risky because that's what it requires. You can't be like everybody else and live out the true nature of your potential. You've got to have a desire inside of you that says that I'm going to be everything that I was designed to be, that I'm going to live life at the fullness of my potential, at the highest level of my design. I'm going to walk into greatness because I am going to challenge myself each and every day, each and every moment, each and every second. I'm going to step up and live out that potential. You hear me say almost every time you hear me speak that I am. I'm going to live my life on full so that I die on E. I have no desire to die early, but I, when I leave this place, at whatever age it is, I want to leave this place having given the world everything inside of me. I don't want any untapped potential following me to the grave. I don't want any un engaged ideas, concepts, inventions, and possibilities left behind because I feared what the outcome would be. I, I don't mind failing if trying puts me closer to my destiny. You got to have some, some desire about you. We're so worried about what people are going to say about us that we don't take action. You got a bunch of people in that box that you should be climbing out of that are sitting there and content because it's other people in the box with them. That should be something in your spirit that makes you discontent with being in the box. That should be something in your spirit that doesn't set well with being average. Yeah, they're going to say you think you're better than everybody. They're going to say you think you're different. It's, but you are different. It doesn't mean that you think you're better. It just means that you know your potential. You know that there's something in your life that you've got to commit yourself to. There's something inside of you that will open up the corridors of possibility and allow you to walk through and do the exceptional and extraordinary, to do things at a level that other people have never experienced. Why? Because you refuse to be a coward and sit back and accept mediocrity as your lot in life. Far too many people out there that are meandering through the maze of mediocrity and finding it acceptable. What I want you to understand is that it's up to you. It's up to you to stand up and to live life at the level of your design. It's up to you to shake off the fear of rejection, the fear of failure. And understand that the only thing that can stop your destiny is you. One, one definition I've heard of destiny, and I, I'll be done. One definition I heard of destiny was that the more you try to stop it, you only ensure that it happens. When you're destined, the only person that can stop that is you. And your purpose has a destiny attached to it. But you've got to walk it. You've got to live it. You got to move through it. It is imperative that you do so. It is imperative that you stand up to the resistance uh, of mediocrity. It's imperative that you stand up to the fear of failure. It's imperative that you stand up to the fear of rejection and the fear of ridicule and the fear of someone looking at you differently. You are different. Different. You weren't mean to, you weren't meant to fit in. You weren't meant to be like everybody else. There's something exceptional about you and it's found in your uniqueness. But let me tell you what happens when you get caught up in the box. You neutralize your uniqueness. One of the things I see most in the people that I deal with is that they've, you, they, that, that they've neutralized their uniqueness. They've neutralized the specific things about them that no one else possesses. And they've hunkered down in the commonality of their existence because that's where they're accepted. That's where they find the path of least resistance. 
that's where everybody is cool with everybody but you weren't placed on this planet to be cool with everybody you were placed on this planet to be a catalyst for change and elevation and empowerment and you can't find that in the commonality of your humanity you find that in the uniqueness of your design and you got to stop neutralizing your uniqueness I want you to understand something. Dr. Miles Monroe said it best. I've also heard Les Brown quote him on it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. There are unfulfilled visions and dreams, inventions that were never created books that were never written, businesses that were never started, relationships that were never built. And they went to the grave with the people who were given the charge to take that step, to carry out that destiny. Don't be that person that when it's time to go, you've got unfinished business because you didn't walk into your uniqueness that's the challenge I have for you I'm about, I'm about to get off here as I always say I'm going to live my life every last second on full so that when I leave this place I die on E and I can die fulfilled knowing that I gave the world everything I had that I, I in some way made this world a better place by helping people change their lives, by creating environments for change and empowerment. Every last person has potential to do something exceptional, to become extraordinary, to be overtaken by greatness. But it requires you to walk in your uniqueness, not neutralize it. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget, get that book. Book number 21, I Am, is now available. Go get it. For all the people who pre-ordered, those shipments start going out this week. So look for your books. If you didn't get it, if you haven't heard from us with an email uh, stating that your book is on the way, definitely reach out to us with the day you purchased the book. And... Uh, the email you used when you purchased the book and we'll be able to track your order from there and make sure that you get your book. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an exceptional day. Do something, just one thing that's exceptional and extraordinary. Just find one thing where you push yourself beyond the place of comfort and do something that will change your life and the lives of others forever. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
From a conceptual standpoint, people talk about it. All of the elements.